so talking about your business right uh, like you said you're a doctor so did you what was the core idea behind suburban when you just started off uh, what was the spark that led to this venture right. yeah the spark for anything in life for me is excellence whatever you do do it well or then don't do it at all uh, for me it's all or none there's no half hearted approach so <clears throat> even if i have to come to chat with both of you i have to make sure that i do it really well or then i don't do it at all uh it's the clothes that i wear or you know it's the cooking that i do at home and i have to invite you on that so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i make sure i do it well and that is what the philosophy is there with everything in my life so when we set up suburban diagnostics the idea was <clears throat> and this is more than 30 years ago so the diagnostic industry was still evolving i would say and most diagnostic lab services were largely in hospitals privately there were not so many <clears throat> i thought that if i set up a diagnostic lab can it truly be world class can it truly be something which can be compared with anything in the west and that is the objective with which we started and the tagline that we put up at that time was creating higher standards in healthcare okay that was the objective that what can we do to continue to pushing the boundaries and creating higher standards mm. and i would like to believe that in some way over the last 30 years we have lifted the level of diagnostic standards not just in suburban but across the industry because you push each other right yeah and overall i think the standards of diagnostic services have significantly improved across the industry over the last 30 years that for me is perhaps the most satisfying outcome nice. of creating higher standards in healthcare but doctor now uh, going back to early days when you decided mm-hmm. this idea came to your mind and you wanted to compete with the hospitals you did you find it difficult at the start to compete with these players who are established in the market they have probably more resources uh, when compared to you at that time was it difficult and challenging and if so like how did you maneuver through them so i was not looking to compete with with hospitals actually you know the i thought it was a great opportunity because mm-hmm. since diagnostic services were largely in hospitals i still remember when i got married and i got married before i set up suburban i had to do a blood test before i got married for a particular condition i went to bombay hospital all the way to do a blood test and that's what sort of triggered that mm. you know why do living in andheri i have to go all the way to bombay hospital and i think it was an opportunity because of the fact that there were labs within the hospitals can we have labs outside hospitals so i think it was an opportunity for me or was it a challenge of course i mean it's always mm. challenging to start something new um i had never run an enterprise uh neither my wife nor i and my wife is the co-founder okay. of suburban neither she nor i had ever run an enterprise so everything was learning on the job hmm. and that is why i think when the introduction you said from one location to 250 centers it took us 10 years to go from one to two okay so those first 10 years hmm. was learning on the job hmm. what i call is uh, i did a practical mba <laughs> so you know i learned everything about running an enterprise during those 10 years yeah. and lot of failures lot of challenges lot of hardships but everything was a great learning for me i mean i'll give an example please so we had this uh, patient who was a diabetic and he is a he was a graduate from iim iit okay so you know best institution so top level management consultant he and i somehow, somehow became you know good friends so he would come back in the evening to pick up his reports and he would sit with me and he would say doc show me the reports what does it show and i would discuss his blood test with him and then he would tell me doc let me see your reports i said but i haven't done my tests he said i'm not talking about those reports i'm talking about mis mm. i said what is mis i said i know what is miss mm. because i have to write miss some in the name of the report mm. i said no doc mis management information systems you don't know that mm. i said no i don't and that was a learning for me that <clears throat> you can't just run a business or run an enterprise without looking at uh, your data. spreadsheet without looking at data 
without looking at numbers are you making money are you not making money are you profitable so these were all learnings for me i had no idea as a doctor you don't learn mis right mm. so it started from such basic things today because of those 10 years i can have a conversation with a finance professional mm. like you guys mm. i can have a conversation with a sales and marketing person i can have a pers- you know conversation with an hr person or logistics or supply chain i learned all that on the job so that was perhaps you know it took me 10 years to go from 1 to 2 yeah but then from 2 to 15 took another i would say 7 8 years hmm. and then 15 to 250 was the remaining part of the journey was uh, delegation a big part of it like in the ne- uh, after you started expanding <clears throat> to multiple centers did you get better in the skill of delegation as well because that's a very important skill set uh, in the world of business as well so when we started our second center our first center was in andheri and our second center was in kandivili so which is 16 kilometers north of andheri so i used to manage the andheri lab and my wife used to manage the kandivili center no oh. so i guess delegation in that sense happened automatically <laughs> uh, because both of us you know were there <clears throat> but then i think she managed that center so well she brought in a team of female professionals okay. so it became known as that female center so kandivli actually gave us the confidence that this is a model that we can scale yeah and the first pathologist i hired so until the second center i used to do everything myself but then it took a toll on my health mm. and i also realized so there was a very important lesson that i learned that i used to sit behind the microscope and look at every patient slide myself mm. because that is what i was trained to do and i was good at it mm. i also realized that is where i am comfortable mm. cuz i am secure behind the microscope because that is my area of expertise right mm. Yeah. Mm. so if you are a chartered accountant you are very good with balance sheets and things like that so then my father told me once he says ye to acha hai tum you are doing a good job sitting behind the microscope but do you think you want to create more of you sitting behind the microscope and you coming from behind to the front of the microscope mm. then you can build more yeah. centers so it took me one year to hire a fresh pathologist mm. took me 6 months to train that person took me another 6 months to let that person start reporting independently so it was difficult for me to let go yeah but once i got that confidence and comfort and i was able to move from behind the microscope to the other side then i was able to create lot many more microscopes and put people behind so today yeah. at suburban diagnostics we have close to 50 full time pathologists okay. and when we merged with dr lal path labs today there are more than 300 full time pathologists mm. dr lal like myself is also a pathologist mm. but letting go of your comfort zone mm. is only where we allowed the growth to happen so as they say right growth happens outside your comfort zone yeah. it's very true in my case and a follow up question on this is you were bootstrapped correct you, yes, yes you were raising money post like way later no, or no, you bootstrapped started bootstrapped is i mean i don't know if there's a word lower than bootstrapped yeah. chappal strap <laughs> yeah. something i don't know if there's a word like that but <laughs> the wind beneath my wings like most of us is my parents my father so he invested in the first real estate that we started the lab in and he helped me get seed capital so we got 23 lakhs of seed capital from Maharashtra State Finance Corporation. So for that you have to put in 25% and they give 75% or 80% they give. So that's 7-8 lakhs plus the real estate at what my father put in, and then we got the balance from Maharashtra State Finance Corporation. Mm-hmm. And that is how we really started. Mm. Also, what about the machinery? Like, so disclaimer: I am a suburban client since the last 10 years with right. my family. Right. So I've been to your Jew uh, branch. I also have the guys coming home. right uh, we be- like as a family we believe in preventive healthcare and every 6 months we uh, do the full body checkups <laughs> via your clinic thank you <laughs> so those machines that i've seen in the clinic right yeah yeah uh, which is if you can tell us and the audience how expensive are those and are these machinery imported like to be called a world class clinic yeah. you need to have the best engine right in the uh, clinic so, so what is the story behind that yeah yeah so when i was studying in the us uh, before i started suburban i got access to truly world class equipment 
and I said that you know there's no reason why I can't have the same in my lab in India now. That 23 lakhs that I raised, right? Most of it I used for equipment that I got from the US. Not realizing that it's not just about the equipment, but it's also the people behind the equipment or the company that supplies you the equipment, which is just as important. So unfortunately, that equipment did not have great after-sales support. So, so within a year of buying those equipments, all those equipments failed. Oh, all of them? All of them failed. Oh. Because That's they were not meant uh, for the Indian uh, ecosystem okay. or the Indian environment. And they didn't have trained uh, support staff. They didn't have after-sales support out here. I still retained those equipments in the loft for the entire duration as a reminder of what mistake I made. So I don't make that same mistake again. Mm. I then started to work only with reputed global brands, mm. uh, whether it is Boehringer Mannheim, which became Roche Diagnostics, Abbott, Siemens, Johnson & Johnson, Beckton & Dickinson, Horiba, Sysmex. These are all truly world-class names. Roche Diagnostics hosts something called as India Days in their headquarters in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So they called five of the most prominent customers from India and I was one of them. I'm very vocal about what I demand from these suppliers because I want to make sure that the customers or the patients get the best. Mm. And since you were saying your family is, you know, dependent on the tests, as is everybody. See, for me, uh, the bottom line is always quality. So quality of the results, quality of the experience, quality of the service, quality of the reports that you get, everything. Ev I only think about quality. Mm. So getting that equipment, the best equipment in the world was... I mean, there was not even a second thought to it. Mm. And I always fight with these global MNCs that don't treat India like a third world country mm. because our expectations are first world. Mm. Our expectations are not third world. So please don't give us anything which you don't give in the West. So mm. I would make sure that we only got the world's best equipment. I could not afford it initially. So the first Boehringer Mannheim, now Roche equipment, was actually a refurbished equipment that I got uh, from a second-hand supplier and I had to strip down the equipment, uh, rebuild it uh, with one of the technicians from scratch. But that gave me a, so much of understanding about the equipment mm. that I knew every part of the machine myself. Mm. From there to where we have today, today we have, you know, the Ferrari's equivalent of diagnostic equipment. Whatever is there in the world, it's there with us. Mm. So the quality of the reports that we generate is processed on truly world-class equipment, second to none. Uh, what you get here, in fact, there was somebody who came from Europe to visit and audit our lab. They said, your lab is perhaps better than many of the labs we see in Europe. Wow. Uh, so that was a big testament for me. Mm. And then we went in for something called as accreditation. We were the 67th lab in the country to undergo something called as NABL, which is National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibrating Laboratories, okay. which is not mandatory even today. Mm -hmm. uh, today, there are close to 3 lakh laboratories in our country, but less than 2,000 labs are actually accredited. So it's mm -hmm. not even 1% of the labs that are accredited. Of the NABL accredited labs, it's a handful, less than 100, which are accredited by College of American Pathologists. Mm -hmm. So we are one of those few labs in the country that has both NABL and College of American Pathologists or CAP accreditation. Mm -hmm. So we continue to push the boundaries, testing ourselves against the world benchmarks that we are not good enough just to be a good lab in Andheri West or Juhu mm -hmm. or in Mumbai or in Maharashtra or in Western India or in India. Good. We are equivalent with any best lab in the world. And that's the quality that we continue to give to our patients no matter what. I have a business question over here. Now, when you are pursuing quality and excellence in like every particular domain, whether it's your technology that you're using or whether it's the paper printout that you're giving or it's the service staff that you have, is how difficult is it to manage your costs? Because sometimes, like, you know, in India, you have the Jugaad mindset. Are Jugaad ho jayega, like, fix this. Like, it's like a makeshift solution for something. So in that 
scenario where you had to focus on quality how did you resist the temptation of like submitting to that jugaad mindset a and b uh, was a resistance from people around you that like are kyu kar rahe ho ye sab ho jata hai kaam darshan there only one way i have thought about my enterprise if it is good enough for my family only then it is good enough for my patients Oh. if it is not good enough for my family it's not good enough for my patients mm. if i did jugaad would i do jugaad with my own family mm. would you do jugaad with your own family no. that has been my way of thinking mm. if the toilet is not clean enough for my father to use it's not clean enough for the patient mm. if my wife cannot lie on that bed mm. because the bed is dirty it's not good enough for a patient mm. if the quality of report is questionable for my family mm. then it's obviously going to be questionable for the patient 